Although it surely feels that way, the United States presidential election isn't the only major race on the world stage this year. There have been a number of important elections already, and at least one more highly fraught race still ahead. One thing clear for most Democratic political contests in 2020, no matter whose name is on the ballot, coronavirus is on voters' minds. Elections right now are as much a referendum on pandemic response as they are on the politicians running. Political rock star Jacinda Ardern secured her second term as New Zealand's prime minister in a historic landslide for the Labour Party. Her strict lockdown early is credited with controlling the spread of the pandemic in her nation. We will govern as we campaign positively, with optimism about our future, with a relentless focus on a recovery that brings New Zealanders with us to deliver long-lasting change. Likewise, South Korean President Moon Jae-in has been praised for how his government met the challenge. His Democratic Party won big in Parliament thanks to record voter turnout. Gloves were even distributed at polling sites for safety. And imagine, if you dare, a U.S. presidential election more than once every four years. My God, Israel could hold its fourth election in just two years if a budget agreement isn't reached by December 23rd. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was already hanging by a thread over alleged corruption before coronavirus. He's also blamed for mishandling the pandemic and effectively crashing the economy. Political opponent Benny Gantz, who won enough of the vote in the last election to become a governing partner with Netanyahu, is pushing for a 2021 budget deal, hoping to speed up Israel's recovery. But even a pandemic couldn't stop the march of authoritarianism in Belarus. Protesters filled the streets after Alexander Lukashenko's August victory, one the EU maintains was illegitimate. His government canceled the opposing candidate's events ahead of the vote, and she was eventually forced to flee the country for her own safety to Lithuania. She maintains her party won. Looking now to Bolivia, where elections were postponed twice this year due to the pandemic. Looming over that election and most of Bolivian politics for the past decade was longtime leftist leader Evo Morales, who also had to flee the country in October 2019 after protests erupted over what many considered to be his illegitimate re-election. Turned out those claims were false. But what a difference a year makes, because as much as Bolivians couldn't stomach another Morales term, they apparently wanted a centrist government even less. Luis Arce, a member of Morales' own leftist mass party, secured a victory in this October's election. After some initial uncertainty over the results, Arce's opponent ended up conceding gracefully. And still to come this year, the presidential race in Burkina Faso, plagued by conflict and widespread violence from groups tied to Al-Qaeda and ISIS. The government won't register voters in the hardest hit areas over safety concerns. Critics worry this could drive disenfranchised citizens to join those brutal groups, making the conflict even worse. And back stateside, President Trump stands accused of turning a crisis into a tragedy. Even the New England Journal of Medicine broke 175 years of nonpartisan tradition to endorse Joe Biden. But will that matter to voters? Only time will tell.